Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're taking a look at Fata Dame, an upcoming god game with similarities to the old black and white games from around the early 2000s. Developed by the folks at 42 Bits Entertainment, I've had my eyes on Fata Dame for a couple of years now, and after a few alpha and beta gameplay opportunities that I wasn't able to dive in on, I was finally able to check it out in its latest form, available for everybody to play right now during Steam Next Fest. It's been on my most anticipated games list for a while now, so I'm really excited to say that so far, it's living up to my excitement. In today's video, I want to dive into some of the key gameplay mechanics and details to highlight exactly what you can expect out of Fata Dam. And if you like how things look and sound, please don't hesitate to wishlist the game on Steam. It's of tremendous help to indie developers especially, because it really helps with visibility on the platform, and you can keep up to date with the game that way too. Now, with no more time to waste, let's dive in. You are a god. In a quite literal sense for the game world, you're a god. Much like in black and white you'd be able to have an effect on the world through your divine interference, in Fata Deum you're able to perform miracles, gather resources, and influence the decisions of the people littered across the various islands of the game as you compete for their attention with other gods. Though, just to be clear, unlike black and white, there is no creature under your command here, just the people and your own power at your disposal. In the next fest demo, there was just the one island on which you could spend six days competing with one other god with one of four different focuses. As a young god yourself, you're relatively weak to start, needing to gain more followers to become more and more powerful over time as you look to oust these other gods from their positions of power, and you'll have a few tools to do exactly that. Multiple villages litter the landscape filled typically with believers of neither you nor your competitors, believing instead in Mother Nature, perhaps a form of animism or other, it's a little unclear. But these villages and towns all start a little underdeveloped, and you can use your influence to grow the ones that believe in you, helping them acquire resources, plan their development, grow their populations, and even go to war or settle new outposts and villages elsewhere on the island. You'll even be able to see what your rival gods are up to and interfere with their work, just as they'll be able to interfere with yours, potentially requiring you to go on the defensive and protect your followers from either the influence or literal harm your opposing gods might cause. As you might imagine, followers are the source of much of your power. Not only are they the primary targets of your miracles and influence, they're also the people whose belief in you generates mana, which you in turn use to perform said miracles, answer prayers, and further influence people's decisions. Throughout the day, mana is generated over time by each believer and by people praying at a temple of yours, and at higher levels, you can harvest resources at your altar to acquire extra mana in a pinch, or you can seek out relics that will give a massive boost to your mana reserves instead. At night, mana is automatically generated in one lump sum based on the number of believers you have on the island. And whichever way you seek out mana, you'll constantly be spending it over the course of the day for even the most basic of tasks, and then at night, you'll use mana to influence the actions of your followers for the following day. You can perform miracles anywhere you wish, and you can even influence the actions of villages across the land whether they believe in you or not. But the further away you get from your altar and the fewer believers of yours within a village, the more mana it'll cost to do even the most basic of tasks. Spreading your faith across the land then is a great way to ensure you can be active in more places, acquiring a variety of resources as each village will typically have one or two that only it has access to, though the alternative is to create a strong foundation and base growing slowly from a central point through war perhaps, rather than weakly across multiple areas using trade to your benefit when needed. The choice is ultimately yours. You are a god after all. Belief, Prayer, and Miracles Belief and prayer are extremely important to you as a god. As explained earlier, believers are one of the key ways to generate mana, which you then need to acquire more believers or do literally anything, so it all starts with spreading your faith. The number of believers you have on the island also determine your level, mixed with prayers that you answer, but more on that in a moment. The higher your level, the more abilities and miracles you'll have at your disposal. For example, when you first level up, you'll finally be able to harvest resources yourself, but only wood. Further leveling up allows you to harvest food, stone, gold, so on and so forth, all needed for various purposes. 
Similarly, at the start, you'll only be able to perform two miracles, both two sides of the same coin, one good version, one evil. Another thing we'll touch on a bit more in just a moment. As you level up though, you'll gain more and more miracles, again, good and evil in nature. So how do you gain believers? How do you gain these followers? Well, that initial pair of miracles you start with are an excellent tool to do exactly that. Targeting individuals and hitting them with some love or perhaps fear is a great way to increase their belief in you by adding to their belief points. It's only available as an option until you're the primary god in a village, which means over 50% of the village actually believes in you. And once that happens, you're eventually going to have to rely on other methods to strengthen your foothold in a town that already mostly believes in you. One such alternative method involves harvesting resources for the town rather than for your altar. While the latter provides you with mana in a pinch, the former increases the town's dedication to you. Another such method is to simply use other miracles. As you can see, there are quite a few that start to become available as you level up, though while they're quite powerful in some ways, they're not as powerful as those first two miracles in directly adding to your believer count. Again though, they'll help in other ways, and they shouldn't be discounted. Some miracles inspire people to work harder, while others might inspire them to fall in love and pair up to uh, produce more potential followers at night. Another way to gain believers, and in fact even levels, necessary to answer prayers. As a god, you can expect your followers to ask you for favors in the form of prayers, each giving a larger or fewer number of prayer points depending on their complexity. Typically, these prayers are a matter of simply performing a miracle, sometimes on the person making the prayer, like if they're asking for inspiration, and other times on a different person entirely, like if they're asking for romance. The prayers will sometimes ask for things beyond your abilities, and so you'll need to level up to be able to perform the miracles being asked of you at times in the first place. At night, prayers take on a different form, still asking favors of you, but typically at a larger scale beyond personal or interpersonal purposes. Some will ask you to build more houses, some will ask for help going to war, some will ask for safety in the form of watchtowers, so on and so forth. You don't have to answer these prayers, and at times you won't have the resources required to do so and will need to work towards answering them accordingly, or you might miss some entirely. But when you do answer prayers, you end up with more devoted followers, and again, like I said, answering prayers is key to leveling up as well, gaining access to more powerful tools over time. Good and Evil What kind of a god game would Fatadeum be if it didn't let you partake in both sides of the coin? Gods can inspire followers through benevolence and fear alike, and that applies to you as it does to others. Fatadeum tries to push this concept further than just having a few different options for miracles though. It makes your leanings matter beyond any single action and beyond simple aesthetics, though those of course apply as well. Though miracles always unlock in pairs, so you always have an equal number of good and evil miracles at your disposal, they aren't necessarily what I would call even similar but different. They are quite different. At times, yes, they'll have similar core effects with slight tweaks, or they'll have diametrically opposed effects. But at other times, you'll see things like inspire or empower as a good god, and things like raise zombies or drain life as an evil god. As you can see, these don't really pair up with each other as good and bad versions of the same idea, they are extremely different, so being a good god or being an evil god can result in extremely different choices, options, and abilities. Now, as discussed earlier, leveling up by gaining believers and answering prayers will unlock more miracles, and you'll see more and more impressive feats as you go along. At one point, you can start producing resources out of thin air, or you can hit people with lightning bolts, or you can... Well, you get the idea. What's really interesting though is that your access to these miracles and their ease of use is dependent on your pre-existing behavior. You can't simply flip a switch on a whim and go from being a loving, benevolent being to cracking the whip and setting houses on fire. Not even if they're your enemy's houses. No, you need to generate yin and yang as additional resources beyond mana that allow you to use higher tier good and evil miracles. 
Some buildings will help generate one or the other, but the simplest way to acquire one or the other is by doing the appropriate type of miracle. For example, instigating dark thoughts in one of your believers will generate the power you need to go ahead with more powerful evil miracles. Instigate said dark thoughts amongst many of your believers and you'll have what you need to instigate a war or some light banditry. You can't be a loving god who's all rainbows and unicorns while also ordering the slaughter of a nearby town. You have to be at least somewhat evil to enact evil things. You have to show your believers that you're in fact capable of both or just one or just the other and you need to stick to it or transition over time accordingly. What's more, if you've built yourself up to be a certain type of god, behaving in the opposite way becomes more and more expensive and difficult to do. I absolutely love this system. It takes morality beyond a simple, pardon the pun, black and white system and has you balancing this constant tug of war, building the appropriate buildings or performing the appropriate tasks to either make sure all options are open to you or to double down on one approach or the other. I like, for example, how you can send your believers in one village to raid or attack another village even if it also believes in you. If the attacking village needs, say, stone and the village they're attacking has some, you might want to send out a looting party. But that's not your only option. As a benevolent god, you can have one village send resources over to another as a gift or through trade tents instead. So all of a sudden, between the choice of morality, the management of yin and yang as resources, and the alternative approaches to various actions, you start to see something a bit more complex develop than a plain old binary system. And I imagine as things go further along, the spread between good and evil becomes more varied and more compelling. The Day-Night Cycle The Day-Night Cycle in Fata Deum plays more of a role than simple aesthetics and it splits your responsibilities into two distinct important sections. We touched briefly on how mana is generated during the day and during the night. To reiterate, your believers generate mana over time during the day, as do the people worshipping you at a temple or you harvesting resources at your altar. At night, mana is generated as a lump sum based on the total number of your believers on the island when night falls. During the day, mana alongside yin and yang are used to perform various miracles and to answer prayers as discussed earlier, while during the night, those same resources are used to influence higher level decision making amongst your people, including invasions, city building, and more besides. You can tell your people to work harder, take a balanced approach, or take a relaxed approach, impacting their productivity at a cost of their overall energy levels. You can compel a village to send resources over to another, or to attack another village, or perhaps to establish a new village or outpost elsewhere entirely. You can tell villages to focus their efforts on one particular building or another, and you can compel villagers to expand their village through the use of basic and support building slots. The former allowing for more housing, schools, taverns, barracks, temples, graveyards, woodcutters, farms, etc., etc., and the latter allowing for watchtowers, trade tents, war camps, and shrines, among other options. Unique locations will also allow for the construction of quarries and other resource gathering points, and naturally, you'll need to make sure your villages actually have the resources required to build structures in the first place. The resource management and city building aspects as such become a core of the nighttime gameplay and some of it might be directed by the prayers of your believers too. Sometimes they'll make requests for certain structures or for certain actions and again, if you're the type of god that answers prayers or you want to level up, you'll have to respond to some of these prayers and take on the challenges. I love how narratively it's posed as you influencing the world through the people's dreams and you can do so within villages that believe in you for lower mana costs but you can also do so elsewhere for higher mana costs. So again, for example, if there's a village out there that has stone, but they don't believe in you, you can spend your mana there, and yes, it'll be at a higher cost, but you can spend that mana there to have them send stone over to the village that does believe in you so they can, for example, build you a temple. Managing your resources in this way becomes very interesting and the day and night having slightly different approaches to mana and completely different approaches to your responsibilities makes for a compelling dichotomy, keeping things more interesting as you level up and unlocking new options and abilities for both daytime and nighttime use. I'll be 
very interested in seeing what more the game has to offer. With the next fest demo only allowing for six days worth of playing, you hit a natural barrier in how high a level you can attain, as each day only lasts so long, and each night only leaves you with so much mana to use. So far, my experience has been quite promising, and my curiosity is more than peaked. With the 2022 release date planned and the current Next Fest demo, you can check the game out right now and again later this year when it finally releases. I'm really excited to follow its development over time. The devs have been posting regular updates and they've been very open to feedback over the course of previous alpha and beta phases. And at the end of the day, we're getting a full release later this year, not an early access build or anything like that. As I said earlier, if Fata Dam sounds interesting to you, please don't hesitate to wishlist it on Steam to help the devs reach more eyes. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't hesitate to leave a like down below either. And if you have any questions or thoughts of your own, leave a comment down below. I do love reading them, and if you want more strategy, city building, or sim gaming reviews, previews, let's plays, and more, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.